Hello, in this video I will show you how to make your own Binance Futures trading bot with Python. You can make any trading strategy you want with any indicators. I think this video will be useful for you. If you are in trading and learn programming, I will use the trading bot on Binance Futures USDM market. Okay, before I have to say, there are very helpful documentation for all libraries I use. I recommend to add these pages to your bookmarks. Sorry if this video is longer than usual. I want to make it more clear for you. Okay, we will make trading bot in Python, so you need to download the latest Python version from the official website. You can find all the needed links in the description. When installing, flag this checkbox, add Python to the path, then just install it as usual. The next step, we have to find some IDE to write a code. You can use anything you want, like Visual Studio Code or PyCharm. I choose PyCharm. Alright, create a new project. Now let's install all the needed packages. Go to Terminal, Enter, PIP, Install, Binance Futures Connector. It's a library that can interact with Binance Futures API. It can take some time, and you may get this error. To fix this, download Microsoft Build Tools, and install this one. Then enter again in terminal, PIP, install, Binance Futures Connector. The next package is Pandas. This library can represent some data and tables. And the last one is TA. It's the same as TA lib, but you can install it without errors. This is technical analysis library, and you will use it to get the most popular indicators like MACD, RSI, EMA, and many other. Before you start making code, you have to get API key and secret key from the Binance website. Go to your account, settings, API management. Then create a new API. Select the first one, and click next, name this as you want. Now they ask me to confirm this action with passkey. It can be security key or your mobile device. You have to set the passkey if you don't have it yet. You can do it in the mobile application. If you have unrestricted IP access, you can't make orders with that API key. To enable it, you should add your actual IP address to this field. It can be more than one IP. And if you have dynamic IP, you have to change it every time you want to use the trading bot. There are a lot of websites that can give you IP address you have. After you put IP address here, you can enable futures or other things. I will make futures trading bot, so I enable only futures. We need both these keys. Okay, now let's make some code. Firstly, I will create one more Python file and name it keys.py. It will contain my API key and secret key. Just add two variables, API and secret. And those variables are equal to the values you got from the Binance API management. It must be inside quotes and it doesn't matter what quotes you use, single or double. Save this file and go to the main file again. Import the keys file so we can use that in the code. But I import the needed keys directly from that file. Then import all the needed libraries from Binance. UM futures import UM futures class. UM means USDM futures. Import the technical analysis library. Import pandas, and name it as PD for convenience. From time, import sleep. We will use it to make delays between requests. And the last one is binance.errors. I need it to handle any errors. Okay, let's make a new instance of a client. Client is equal UM futures, and in brackets you have to put your API key and secret key. Then let's make a config, including take profit, stop loss, margin volume, leverage, and margin type. If take profit is 0.01, that means order will be closed when price increases by 1%. The same as for stop loss. Volume is one order size in USDT. If the volume is 50, and leverage is 10, that means you will put 5 USDT of your real money. I think you know how it works. Margin type, it can be only isolated or cross. I use isolated to avoid losing all my money. The next step let's add some functions. The first one is checking your futures account balance in USDT. All functions in Python start with def. Def is short for define. It's a keyword that you need to define a function. Name it. Get balance USDT. There are no arguments, so just brackets. In Python we don't have begin, and, or curly brackets. We just type colon, and then enter some code indented. It can be one tab stop, or four spaces. What's inside this function? Go to GitHub page of the Binance Futures Library. Here you can get examples for any feature. There is an example with getting balance. Copy that part of code and paste it inside this function. Standard PyCharm logs can't show logging for this example, so I just rename it to print. Alright, let's try to get my balance. Call this function below, just type the name of the needed function. If I run the code, I see all assets like BTC, LTC, XRP, but I want to get only USDT. The asset must be USDT, and we need to get this balance. For all element in the response, if the asset parameter is USDT, let's return the balance of this element, and make it float, because it was string value. Return send a function result. Now to get the balance print the function result. And now I can see the USDT balance if I run the script. To be honest you can make your trading bot without this function, but I had to show you how it works. I leave it in the code to make sure I still have some balance to trade. The next one, we have to get all available symbols from Binance Futures. It's USDM Futures, so I have to get only USDT pairs, like BTC USDT, XRP USDT, ETH USDT, and other pairs that can be traded on the futures. Make a new function for this, I name it. Get tickers USDT. There are no arguments as well. Create a new variable, it's an empty list for the tickers. Response is equal to client dot ticker price, and no arguments because we need to get all symbols from the market. Okay to get all USDT pairs create a loop, for all elements in the response, if there is the USDT word in the element, add this symbol to the ticker list. 
After this you will get all available USDT pairs in the ticker list. Then just return this value. Let's try to check this function. Add this line. Print the result of this function. Run the script. And as you can see now I have all symbols from the futures market I can use to trade. Then let's get an info about the charts. We will get all the needed info about the candles, like open, close, high, low values, and also the trading volume on the market. We need this to use it for indicators. Okay, create a new function for this, clients. And now there is one argument, symbol. This function will return the last 500 candles for the needed symbol, and time frame. I use a try construction, to avoid any crashes when it gets some error. Now I will use the pandas library to represent the candles info in tables. Response equals to pd.dataframe, and in brackets make a request to get clients. There are two arguments, the symbol, and data frame. It can be any time interval from Binance, like 15 minutes, or 1 hour. Return this response, and add this accept, like it was on the first function. Let's print this candles for some coin, like XRP. Run the script, I got this result. It's all information for the last 500 candles. We can't work with this one, so I have to reformat it. We need only the first six columns. It's time, open price, highest price, lowest price, closing price, and volume. And as you can see I renamed the columns to make it more convenient. I don't need the index, so I replace it with candles closing time. And reformatted the time values into a normal form. The last one, you have to set all the table values as float numbers. And now if I run the script I have this pretty nice data frame for the last 500 XRP candles. We will use these values for some trading strategy. Then we have to change leverage to the value from the config. Make a new function, set leverage. Now we have two arguments, symbol, and the leverage. I go to the GitHub examples and copy the needed part of code. Then paste it inside the function. Rename the instance to client. And as I said before, I have to change logging things to print. And the most important thing in this function, don't forget to put here the symbol argument, and the leverage. The next function let's set the margin type. There are also two arguments, symbol, and the type. As I said before, it can be isolated or cross only. I go to the examples again, and get the needed example. Rename the client instance to client, replace logging to print, and put the arguments inside the request. Now you should make two functions, get price precision, and get quantity precision. Why do you need this? These functions return number of digits after the decimal for price and amount. Keep in mind, all symbols have different precisions. You will get an error if this number is higher than the actual precision value. For example for XRP, the price precision is 4, and the quantity precision is 1. We will need it later when making orders. Okay, I just make two similar functions, that return price precision, and quantity precision values for the needed symbol. Okay, now we can create a function that can place an order to buy or sell on Binance futures. I name this function open order, and there are two arguments, symbol you want to buy or sell, and side, that can be only buy or sell. Then I have to get the current price for the needed symbol. I use the ticker price again, and make this value float. Let's try to get precisions for the symbol. I make a new variable for quantity precision, and use the function I made before. And make the same for the price precision. Then I should calculate amount of the coin I want to buy or sell. Quantity is equal volume, divided by the current price. And we have to round this value to quantity precision. Because if I use the quantity like this, I will get an error. Okay, if side is buy, let's try to place a buy order. The first request is client dot, new order. And there are some arguments. Symbol is the symbol you want to buy or sell. Side is buy. Type can be limit or market. If you use limit order you have to set the price you want to buy the coin. If you set the market order type, you will just buy that with the current market price. Quantity is the amount you calculated before. Time in force, here you can set the time the order waits for execution, or just use good till cancelled. And price is the current limit price, or if you use the market type, you don't need to set this parameter. Then I print that the order is placing, and print a response of the request to make sure it's opened. Wait 2 seconds. Then calculate a stop loss price, it's the current price minus price multiplied by the SL variable from the config. And we need to round this value with the price precision. Make a second request to open a stop loss order. It's similar to the first one, but the side is sell. The order type is stop or stop market. I want to place stop market order. Then add stop price argument instead of price, it will be the stop loss price. And now print response to see what's happening. Wait 2 seconds more, and in the same way make a take profit order. Take profit price is the current price plus the price multiplied by the TP variable from the config. And now the order type is take profit or take profit market. And don't forget to replace stop price to the take profit price. Add exception to handle any errors you can get when placing orders. And then add another condition, if side is sell. Just duplicate this part of the code. And in the first request when you open sell order, change side to sell. And also change it in the stop orders to buy. You should also swap plus and minus in the take profit and stop loss prices. You can use other type of orders, or you can do it without stop orders, it depends on what bot you want to make. The next step let's add a function that can return amount of open positions. We need this later to set a maximum concurrent positions. This function doesn't have any arguments. Try to make some request. Get position risk. Create a new variable for amount of positions. It's equal to zero. And for all elements in the response, if there is some symbol with non-zero value position, add one to the positions. This function must return the amount of all open position. And paste the exception. 
there is a case when some position closes with one stop price like take profit, and there is still another stop price in the open orders. We will use the next function to close all unnecessary orders. It has only one argument, symbol. I copied this request from the GitHub examples. Rename the client instance, and use print instead of logging. And also put symbol argument here. Alright, now we have all the needed helper functions to make a bot. Let's make a function for some strategy. Today I will use a simple strategy. It's MACD plus EMA. If MACD histogram changing the value from negative to positive, and the last candle is above the 200 period EMA line, then I place buy order. Or if the MACD histogram becomes negative, and the last candle is below the EMA line, then I want to sell it. That's really simple. I know that's not 100% successful strategy, but I want to show you how it works in the code. Okay, I name this function as check MACD EMA. There is one argument, symbol create a new variables for candles, and it's equal to the client's function. We made this function before, you can change time frame here. And put the symbol inside this function. Now we will use the technical analysis library. You can check all available indicators and how to use it on this API documentation. I will use it with the default parameters. Okay make a condition. MACD histogram based on candles closing price, and take the last interval, this value must be positive, and then take the previous interval, and it must be negative. Like you can see on this image and all one more condition for the EMA, it's based on the closing prices of the candles, and window argument is a period of the EMA indicator. And take the last interval value, and this must be lower than the last candle closing price, then I return up. Let's do the same thing, but for the opposite situation, the last MACD value must be negative, and the previous one is positive, and EMA line is above the last candle. Then return down. Or if there is no signal I just return none. This is my strategy, if you have some strategy you want to test, leave a comment, I will make a video about all strategies from the comments. Okay, now you can execute the strategy. Create a new variable, order, you need this to check if some position is opened. This script will open only one position in the same time. Now order is false. Add one more variable, symbol. It's the coin which position is open. Now it's empty string. Then let's get all available coins on the market, it's all USDT pairs you can trade. Make an infinite loop, it will work until you close it yourself. Check current open positions, I created a variable for this. Then I print it in the console to see that. If there are no positions, change variable order to false, and also if it isn't the first run, close unnecessary orders from the last closed position. Okay if I don't have any positions, let's check all elements from the symbols list. Signal is equal to check MACDEM a function for each symbols. If this signal is up, print that I get a buy signal for some coin. Change mode to the needed one, in my case it's isolated. Wait one second, and change the leverage to the value from the config. Wait one more second. Print about placing the buy order for the found symbol. Then call the open order function for the symbol, and side is buy. And now the symbol variable is equal to the current element, it's the found symbol for which we place the buy order. Order is true now because we have one open position. And then break, because I want to open only one position at the same time. There is one more condition, if signal is down. Now just copy the code for the buy order. Change here to sell, and change the side in the open order to sell as well. Then print, waiting some time, and sleep for 60 seconds. I usually set here more than 60 seconds, like 5 minutes or even more, but I did it just for the video. And the script is done. As I said before I will upload it to my GitHub. You can take it as example. I will also add comments to the code. Okay, let's try to run the bot. It shows my futures balance. Then it says I have no positions. And it found a sell signal for SHIB USDT. Don't worry about this error. It says that it's no need to charge margin type because it's already isolated. Then it changed the leverage to 10. And placed 3 orders. The sell order corresponding to the signal. And 2 orders for stop loss and take profit. And then waiting 60 seconds. Go to Binance, as you can see, I have one position for the SHIB USDT symbol, and there are also stop orders. That means this script is working well. The bot works all the time, until you stop this, or some error appears. You can get the same error on invalid API key, IP, or permissions, but it can appear when you have too much requests in the same time, or unstable internet connection. My strategy is random, I test it with different time frames and stop orders, but it's anyway not so good. I have profit orders as much as loss orders, so I won't get money for this, I just make it for the video. If you have some strategy to test, leave a comment about it. As I said I will leave all the needed documentations in the description, if you don't get something from the video, you can check it in the docs. I hope this video was useful and interesting for you. Thanks for watching.